Welcome to another episode of Founders Club. Today, I'm going to be talking to Christina Pernfors, who is the founder of Aesthetics and Style. She is a professional image consultant and has her degree in advertising. We're going to be talking about how you can build a strong personal brand that will help you get more clients in your real estate business, simple style tips that you can implement right now into your business, and several tips on how you can make your advertising look good. If you have any questions, put them in the box down below. Make sure you roundhouse kick that like button so other people just like you can find this video. And as always, if you like money, and you like real estate, this is the show for you. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the inside. Welcome to Founders Club, the show for real estate entrepreneurs. All right, very excited to be here with Christina Pernfors. is gonna be going into all sorts of exciting things related to branding, image, and all the things that uh, make everything you do look better. So why don't we just start by getting a brief background on kind of you and, and uh, how we're here today. All right, well, thank you first and foremost for having me. I'm excited. Um, so yes, I am, I am originally from Stockholm, Sweden. So yes, I do have an accent. Uh, and uh, my background is marketing, advertising marketing was my first career. But prior to that, I grew up in a fashion family, so to speak. My mom and my grandmother owned women's boutiques in Sweden. So I learned in the stock room about style and that it's not one size fits all it's not one style fits all i got i got a good education on true authentic style back in the stockroom so that was a great um great start that i didn't know was so uh, unique and right great. and then after advertising it took me to new york advertising took me to the u.s but then um i knew that wasn't what i wanted to do with my life uh, so i Started. I went back to school in order to get a visa and studied interior design. And then throughout the years, I've been an interior designer for about 17 years now. And throughout the years, I often heard my clients say, oh, but Christina, I wish I looked as good as my house because I don't look like I live here now. So can you do me too? And <laughs> I took that to heart feeling, you know, you know what? There's a disconnect between how people live and how they show up themselves or how they feel about themselves and how they mm. feel about their home. So I said, you know what, there's something there. So that's when I also certified as an image consultant. So now I get to do it all because it's all about brand building and building your own personal brand and about making sure that you're comfortable in your own personal brand. Yeah, I agree with that. That's something that we talk about a lot. And that was something I was really excited to talk to you about because I know I know you have kind of those multiple backgrounds, but they all kind of relate to one thing, which is just making things look good from your advertising to your interior design to yourself and how you present and all of that. Um, and one thing I heard that you said was everything about you speaks. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, it's about the entire picture. We often think and we often prepare what we're going to say verbally if we're doing a presentation or or talking to someone. Um, but it's not it's actually that first impression is first and foremost based on how you your appearance, how you look, how you walk, your body language. And all of that, all those silent visual cues, they paint a very uh, loud picture and speak very loudly about who you are. So what you say really is the last sort of input a person gets mm. about you. Mm. It's all about the other visual cues before. So it's it's all about you speak. You can't just think that no one's going to see what you're wearing or no one's going to see how you sit if you're sitting, you know, in a in a video conference. Everything says something about you. So what tips on that note would you have for us to look good and, you know, present ourselves in the best way possible? Because I'm guessing a big part of that is not 
being fake and untrue to who you are, but more authenticity and then figuring out the imaging piece to go along with that. Absolutely. It's all about authenticity because, you know, what looks good is very subjective. What looks good to me will not look good to someone else. So it's all about being authentic to yourself, who you are and who you want to be. Of course, there's always going to be aspirational aspects in our brands. You know, we wish we were a little bit more of this or I wish people see me like that. So aspiration is a good thing, but we got to be true to ourselves, to our own brand and who we are. And, and if you're, you know, you can't, you can fake it to a certain point, but no, it's going to, people are going to see through it. You have to, to be sure about yourself and who you are. And that's the, that's the, uh, the foundation of style and your brand and, and making sure it, it all paints that same picture. And what are, what are some tips on, on doing that in terms of the whole picture? Because it sounds good, right? And it can be really hard. Of course, it takes, it doesn't happen overnight. But I, one thing, the first thing I do with my clients is always to look at your personal attributes, uh, meaning your, your personal brand attributes. And this is someone, something we do, I, I know back in my advertising days, this is something we did with, with every client we ever had. It was, is a big, big, important step in building a brand is finding out who are you and who, how do you want to be seen? So picking three to five attributes that you think describes who you are or how you want to be seen by others is the, the first uh, and most important step you need to do. So it can be, mm -hmm. any, just to give an example, it can be anything from, well, I want to be seen as loyal, approachable, and modern, or... Mm -hmm sophisticated, successful, whatever it is, you got to decide what your attributes are. And that's the, the foundation for everything. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. I think being clear on, on that in terms of how you want to present yourself and your brand, and then all that will in turn help you get clear on the market that you're trying to serve, the clients you're trying to serve. And that will in turn kind of help you guide your advertising in a certain way. Um, and a couple examples I can think of just off the top of my head, you know, we're, we're um, a heavy real estate audience. So if someone's out in rural Montana and they sell ranches, that's going to be an entirely different image brand vibe than someone in Beverly Hills that's selling multi-million dollar homes to, you know, extremely high-end wealthy clients. You got it. That's 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 a great example. That's exactly right. You're not going to appeal to everyone cuz just like you don't love everyone, not everyone's going to love you. So you need to know who you are and who you want to appeal to. And that's mm -hmm. When you, when you have that nailed down, everything, as you, as you said, it, it becomes so much easier. It's like the funnel, you know, principle. When there's too much, we got to nail it down so it becomes a steady stream. Mm. Yeah, I like that. And that can bleed over into everything. Once you know those three to five kind of themes like you were talking about, yep. you know, if you're a, a sophisticated, um, you know, high-end type person, that's going to create different messaging, create different types of ads, create different types of social media content than the guy that is, you know, I'm the, you know, I, made me laugh the other day. I saw a realtor with that wears a cowboy hat in every single uh, yeah. bit of marketing he does. And, and, you know, so that's kind of the other side. I'm the, the cowboy realtor, which yeah. is kind of funny here in San Diego, but uh, you know, hey, he, he's got it, a niche. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, exactly it's so right. true. And I, I do work because here in Florida, we have a lot of realtors and realtors are actually a l group that I work a lot with. And I've been uh, hired by brokers to come in and work with with the realtors because it is it's hard as a realtor. You're not just representing yourself. You're representing the broker, but also the client if you're on the se seller side. So there's a lot of of things to think about and it's it's important so yeah absolutely so on that note i'm just curious what your thoughts are on um suit and tie versus you know dressing 
down, we'll call it, um, in terms of, you know, being a professional, because I know there's a lot of thoughts out there on on each side of the coin. But as an image consultant, I'd be curious to what what your thoughts are. Well, again, it's going back to it depends on what it is you're trying to achieve and who you are. Sometimes there's no right or wrong. You just need to make sure it's consistent. That's the important mm -hmm. part. So you might be a, a Mark Zuckerberg and always have a you know hoodie and a great T-shirt and still be a multi-billionaire or whatever. It doesn't matter, but that's his brand. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Or uh, Steve Jobs and always wear a, a black turtleneck. Or you are an upscale, you want to come across as, as a luxury, in this case, realtor or whatever. You're, you're, you're aiming to that market. Well, then you need to dress the part for that. And you probably mm. need the suit and tie because that's what people are going to expect of you. Mm. Yeah. All comes back to that brand diamond and then customer avatar. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That makes sense. Um, another thing that uh, I heard from you was in your business, you create image experiences for your clients. Tell me about that. So for since I do have kind of a few different hats, although they all come together, but I do have clients that are strictly interior clients or strictly image clients. But when I get to do all of it, that's really when you can do that image experience because then you you can think of, of all the aspects of their life. And that's what I enjoy the most, if I may say so. Mm -hmm. I love all my clients, <laughs> but you know, that's really fun because then it becomes totally integrated and you can really look at the person and and make sure it works for for all aspects of their life and that's what what i really that's a good day at work when i get to do that <laughs> very good uh so is that kind of just tying it all together yep. and making sure the way you dress matches the way you advertise matches the way you present yourself on social media and kind of having yeah. that consistency throughout yeah exactly when it all i say i call it the red thread theory okay and it's, it needs to be a red because we all are going to have different situations in our lives and we wear different hats so to speak you know we have we are we're not going to wear the same clothes when we go to a soccer game as when we you know go to a business meeting or date night but in all of those hats all the hats need to have a red thread, meaning mm. they can't be completely different. You can't seem like you have split personalities. They're not mm. going to be the same. They're going to be appropriate for the occasion. But the red thread is your personal brand that's carried through the different situations or different hats. Mm. And um, that, that creates that consistency. And with consistency comes you become you come across as more trustworthy because people know what to expect it's when someone flip flops one day this the other day that that's when you become a little wary and that's our brain going mayday mayday something is not right mm -hmm. here and how does our brain interact when when it all comes together like that the the red thread theory so to speak so it was actually the ancient greek that decided that Things are considered beautiful and therefore also trustworthy when they are in balance, in harmony, mm. and in symmetry. And all that is kind of visual, different visual aspects. So when that's what the eye sees and the brain interprets. So when things are balanced, symmetrical, and, and harmonized with each other, the brain calms down and therefore mm. can, can trust what they see. I like that. So keeping it consistent equals more trustworthy, more likable, more believable, yeah. all of those types of things, which I think we all want to be to a certain extent. Yeah. And style. I mean, being stylish, you can do that on any budget. It's not that it does not have a do dollar sign tied to it. it. It's all about the consistency and knowing who you are and staying consistent, having that red thread. That's your style and that's being stylish. Okay, I like that. What what style tips would you have for us real estate folks? 
Well, I mean, again, there's so many different markets. There's so many different um, clients and, and aspects. But you should always, of course, you want to make sure you look trustworthy and successful because none of us want to hire a realtor or a lawyer or a doctor who doesn't seem to know what they're doing or doesn't seem very successful, you know, has all the time in the world. So always aiming to be whatever your style is, but always aiming to make sure that you are on top of it. That's important. And that's um, creating, you know, yourself as a, as an expert, because that's what you want to be in that field. People are, you know, (laughs) giving you one of their biggest, biggest decisions in life uh, to Mm. guide them through that. So you want to make sure you are uh, looking on top of things. Yeah, I I like that. I think, um, again, back to your point about the suit and tie thing, it's not necessarily about, because some people just aren't suit and tie people. And if they wear a suit and tie, they don't feel good. They don't feel, and, and, and I think that feeling comes through in a lot of things when especially in in meetings and things like that and if if you feel good but at the same time you know if you feel good in sweats and a hoodie that might not be the best look for you know going into someone's house and taking a a listing presentation so i think that yeah that's a good distinction on you know being comfortable and feeling good but still looking to, to how you say it's successful and on top of things. Yeah. And look at the details because people notice the details. So as realtors, you're using your car a lot. You're probably driving clients around in cars to go to showings. Then what does your car look like? Is it clean? Mm-hmm. What does it look like on the inside? Um, same right. thing is, you know, your nails, your hair, like the little things that people think no one cares about. People look at that. And that's, mm. those are more important than we think. So the clothes themselves sometimes is the least important. It's all about the little details. Yeah, and I like what you said earlier about it's not about the dollar amount. Like even, even if you don't drive, you know, the brand new AMG Mercedes, yeah. it's just, it's really about, is it clean? Is it, you know, do you have trash all over your back seat? You know, is there dirt all over it? You know, and that stuff that doesn't cost a lot of money to just keep, you know, keep your car clean, keep the back seats clean, you know, present that image of just being on top of it. Exactly. And then talking about cars, just as a kind of a, as an example for myself as an, as an interior designer, I live in a market where there's a lot of high-end super, you know, beachfront. Uh, I live in Florida, so beachfront properties. There are a lot of high-end designers. I market myself more as the mid-range, like regular folks designer. I get to go in and do a room here and, and a house there, but that's more what I love to do. And, and so I knew when I was buying a new car, it's a big difference if I buy, because I knew the size I wanted, if I buy a Cadillac Escalade or if I buy a Chevy Tahoe, it's going to have a very different message. And sometimes the same thing for realtors, you know, if you show up for a mid-range listing or lower end listing, if you show up looking too luxurious, they might (laughs) think that they're overpaying you. Mm. That's how they think, Mm. oh, oh, no, no, that's, I'm, she's overcharging me. Definitely or he's overcharging me. So it's all about those little subtle cues that you got to think through. Yeah, I like that. And that all comes back to that consistency of brand and and image and all of that. So I like that. Um, So on the interior decorating note, I saw that uh, they call you the frugal decorator. And uh, so why don't why don't you just are there any low cost ideas that you can give us that uh, you know we can advise our clients on or implement in our own our own spaces? Absolutely, there's always tweaks that can be made. Yeah, I think again, it's about the little details. So I say, if I go in and sometimes I help people with their listings if they're going to list their house, and I don't do staging, I don't have a warehouse full of furniture, but I can help out spursing things up and and you know today too when people are thinking more 
about what money they spend. The little details like your your handles on your kitchen cabinets, handles or not, you can update those instead of ripping out the entire kitchen, update your handles to a more Mm. contemporary style. Such a quick, much cheaper fix. I mean, handles can get can get away there price-wise too, but there's a lot of good alternatives and you get a facelift for a fraction of the price. So little yeah. details, door handles around. I just updated all my door handles in the house because they had the builder grade knobs, updated mm. them to black. I mean, it makes, you would have thought I bought new doors, but no, yeah, they're the same. Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, a lot of the times it could just be the little things like, even out front, um, you know, it, it, just putting a nice address plate on the house. Absolutely. You know, that can cost you probably less than 50 yeah. bucks. Yeah. And you'll have a whole new aesthetic from outside or even inside, like simple things like lighting fixtures that yeah. can be, you know, a hundred or two hundred dollars can make a big in- difference on on how the room looks. Yep. And those are sometimes, of course, if it's pendants or chandeliers, you might need professional help, but even just with uh, table lamps that you can place in different heights, layering the lights. I mean, those can cost very little and can make all the difference. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Okay. So uh, let me switch over to like the advertising side. What are some tips and strategies that you would have for making your advertising look good? Well, I haven't worn that hat in a long time, but No, I think keeping it simple, keeping it clean and simple. There is something about white space that people forget. They think they need Mm -hmm. to fill every single little part of, because you're paying for the ad. Uh, But white space says a lot. And that it's almost like a, you know, you you have a pause when you speak in order for people to breathe. Uh, Same thing with white space in ads. Don't try to do too many messages at the same time. Just keeping it clean and simple. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I would definitely agree. And then also on the, you know, same as white space, I think also picking a color scheme Mm. is important. Just the same way, you know, when you go to your house, you get the little card with the four or five colors on it. And like, those are your colors that you stick to. You don't don't put red and green and yellow and all of these crazy colors together because it just makes it look noisy and, and not well put together. Exactly. And now it's so easy with Canva now. I think we probably all use Canva. There's free versions, yes, love pro it. versions. Yeah, but they love give it. you automatically a whole brand color scheme. So if you like something yeah. you see, you could just take that and they will translate it. So it's, it's really easier than you think yeah that's a great tip and there's another one called uh graphic river which also sells uh pre-built fully branded templates and that's everything from like door hangers to flyers to listing powerpoint presentations all within a you know within a scheme yeah so once you identify your your kind of brand diamond and what you want to convey and the words and all that, then you can find a matching branding advertising kit to kind of bring it all together with the red thread. Like you were saying. Yeah, exactly. You, you pick it up so fast. (laughs) Good, good, good. I like it. Yeah, that's good. Um, have another one question for you. I'm curious to what your thoughts are. This is another big one in real estate is people put their pictures all over everything. What are your thoughts on having your picture on everything, business cards all the way around? So personally, I think it's a great idea because there's something about recognition. Just looking at a name, you're not going to remember, but looking at a face, you remember it, the rec- recognition will be much larger. Uh, So I do think putting your face on your marketing material, on your, you know, listing boards, whatever you call it, outside a house, uh, definitely business cards. I think it's a great idea. But, but, do not heavily retouch your marketing material or your own face. (laughs) I've worked with realtors that had 
that have retouched 20 years and 50 pounds of their marketing material to the point where you don't recognize them when you see them. That yeah. defies the whole purpose. Instead of being, ah, oh, I remember connection, you're going to be, wait, what? It's like being yeah. catfished, you know, on a dating site. It's like, that's <laughs> what you look like? So even though we all love a good filter and we want to look as good as possible, do not retouch your marketing material to a point where you're not recognizable. It still ne it needs to look, you need to show up like the person in the picture. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, I would say that's probably one of the biggest crimes in real estate these days is the, uh, the misrepresentation of photos. Um, according to the National Association of Realtors, the average realtor is a 56 year old woman. And when, you know, that 56 year old woman puts a photo on their business card and it's like their high school graduation picture uh that that generally is uh is not good representation no and you're setting yourself up the first thought for the client's side is going to be disappointment it's going to be what that's not what i thought right. you look like yeah. so the initial yeah. first impression is just bad yeah I, I i like that i think that's very well said i think uh, i agree with all of that i think having the business card for me i think that just adds an extra layer of association especially if you're going to a lot of networking events where you meet a lot of people and then at the end of the night you have a big fat thick stack of business cards yeah. like the ones that have the face on there i automatically remember them you know way easier than the one that was like oh was it this one or this one i don't really yeah. remember who it was um and then obviously like a little bit of retouch is okay but we don't want to you know we don't want to look like someone else or like your younger self from no, 20 years ago no. exactly <laughs> yeah cool um what about kind of the the visual aspect of of personal branding what is what are some thoughts you have on that so the visual aspect is kind of all the things we've talked about the personal you know it's everything that people can see and also everything that you can see yourself because it's not just about how others see you it's about how you see yourself and how you, your own experience, because we can be very hard on ourselves and we can, we can put ourselves down a lot. So it's right. the visual branding is just as much about your internal branding as it is external. You want to make sure you build yourself up and you do, you learn about yourself so that you can show up at your best. Um, because otherwise mentally we can, uh, Put ourselves in pretty pretty bad black holes if we don't if we don't look at ourselves in a positive light so a lot of okay. what i do is teaching people about their themselves meaning their own mm. personal attributes you know like body shape how do you dress that shape best and coloring and all those things and it's because these things we don't learn in school we make right. decisions about it every day but when you know more how to lead with the positive things about yourself it makes a huge difference and you can really so, uh, feel more confident yeah totally agree what about what would you say to the people that say i don't have style or you know that's that's not important to me kind of thing i'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that because i'm sure you do hear that oh yes not daily yeah. but almost absolutely mm -hmm. Well, first of all, let's let's bust the myth that you don't have style. Everyone has a style or several, but there is, you, you, unless you're always naked, you're going to have a style. Um, okay, fair, fair point. And you don't have to care. I mean, it's, but as long as you are aware that other people do. Mm. So it's your prerogative to not care whatsoever. But I think let's not fool ourselves that others don't care because they do. And first impressions, you know, you have less than seven seconds. You mm -hmm. are going to get judged because our brains need to make fast decision because we're still in survival mode. So people are going to make assumptions about you. And 
you could say, I don't, I don't give a rat's ass or I don't, you know, it's not important. That's totally fine. As long as you don't fool yourself thinking the way you think is like how other people think. That's, that's a really, really good point is at, at some point, it's not about you. It's about your clients and how they are viewing you. And you obviously want to be more successful. And so therefore putting your best foot forward and, you know, to your point, like not everyone has the same style, but you do have a style Mm -hmm. and just take that and run with it and realize that as much as we all hear, you don't, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. The reality is people do judge books by their cover and, uh, and they will judge you the same way. And again, it's not because we're mean. It's just how the brain works. We need to put people, people in boxes. We need to categorize them. Otherwise the brain, the brain needs to go keep moving because otherwise the, you know, the, the tiger is going to eat us. So we need to be fast. Um, that's right. and, and so that's how, how it works. You can say, I don't judge people, but you do subconsciously you do. A- mm. And it works the same for everyone. So yes, you don't have to care as long as you know, because it's about being intentional when you are intentional, you know what people, what the first impression is going to be. You know what people are going to think about you because you've already thought it through. So you're not going to be surprised. And if your intention is to be carefree and I don't mind at all what people think, then great. But then that's your brand. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And, uh, that's great. Yeah, that's great advice. And what about, let's talk about a little bit more uh, your business and, and how you're growing your business. Because that's, uh, we always like to talk to people about how they're growing, scaling, marketing, all that kind of stuff. So I'm in a bit of a, a, a scaling um, dilemma. Right? It's always hard when you're, for my image side, I, I did a digital course last year. So that part is easier to to grow and scale because what I teach can, you know, it's something I don't have to be there physically. It's very yeah. doable for people. But of course, for interiors, if someone hires me to do their house, I can't send someone else. It has to mm. be me. So that part is much harder to scale. Um, and I've tried with, with um, <laughs> assistance, but it, it's not really, hasn't worked out for me from a design. Yeah. So I just always need to know that that part can only grow so much. Whereas the, the image, cause for me, that side, I can really teach, which I love to do. I feel like when I've done, I've done my job when they don't need me anymore, when they're mm. off on their own. Uh, so that side, I'm trying to scale more through uh, virtual digital courses i'm working on my second one but i i love it yeah that's great yeah that's that's i think that's a perfect way as you kind of split it you know the interior decorator side i can imagine that's harder to scale so in that side you're probably just going to scale your prices and on the other side on the other side you do have a nice scalable thing through the digital course so i think that's that's a a good good pivot and I will say, uh, I did something this year that I said I was never going to do. I gave a TED talk or TEDx. Oh, talk. And nice. um, that is a good way to grow your business. I'll just say that mm. out to anyone who ever thought about giving a TED talk, do it. Because I had no idea what an impact that could be for my business. How does that work exactly? Is that something you just apply for? Or how did how did that come to be? So in my case, I knew the organizer. So he, we had been in the same networking group. So he had heard me speak and he wanted me to speak. So I got really lucky, but I Mm. turned him down twice. But then I got my (laughs) sentence together and said, yes. Uh, But otherwise, yes, you apply. There are TEDx talks around the country. So you can just go online and apply most of them have a theme so you can see where there's a theme that fits you and what you do. Um, But yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, thing to do. I I love it. Yeah. That's, 
That's another thing we talk a lot about is growing your business with OPM, not other people's money, but other people's media. Yes. <laughs> so yes. If you can get right. on, you know, to your point, a stage or a podcast or an event or anything like that, that gets you exposure, not one to one, but one to many. That's always a good opportunity that you should look yeah. into. And I do, I speak to a lot of realtors uh, here in the area. I've done some uh, virtually as well to kind of in their sales meetings and, and any other kind of get together they have talk about mm. personal st- branding and style. And so I, I enjoy, I enjoy that a lot. Cool. Um, a couple more questions before we wrap up here, but uh, I have two young sons at home, five and seven, and I'm curious what your advice to them would be and the next generation on just how to be successful in life and business. Ooh, that's a big one. Um, well, I'm going to go back to my core and say that I think young, if young people can learn to really know about themselves and what they stand for, their values. Um, first and foremost, I think it's so much easier because we're going to pivot. I think our generation or the last couple of generations have pivoted much more um, in our in our work than than our parents did. I mean, they, they picked the profession and that's what you stuck with. So, mm. but I think it's much easier to pivot when you know yourself. Mm. And what you stand for. And um, it's easier to grow when you know what you're going from and what you want to go to. It's much easier to to grow as a person. So what I try to do with my kids, mine, is, my, mine are 18 and 13, but they're um, really hoping that they find their own person. And of course, they're in the stages where they don't know yet. They're experimenting. It's, it's the growing phase, but always yeah. coming down to, learn about yourself and what you really stand for and what you want out of life and what you want people to think, how you want to be remembered. Mm, That's like that. um, And then that's the, that's the brand you're building for yourself. Cause we, I I think we talked about legacy a lot, you know, what's your legacy. I think that equals what is your personal brand. It's the same thing. Mm. Mm, I like that. I like that. What do you want to be remembered for? And then reverse engineering from there, everything else. Yeah. That's great. Love that advice. And then, um, so this is another easy one that we can wrap with. Um, Tell me what it takes to be successful at, let's say, I don't know what we call this space. What does it take to be uh, what does it take to build a successful personal brand in 60 seconds or less? What it takes to build uh, you want me to talk in 60 seconds or less or how to build a brand in 60 seconds or less? No, yeah, 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 yeah. Your thoughts on how to be successful at building your own personal brand in 60 seconds or less. All right. So again, consistency, 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 authenticity, consistency. Uh, Mm -hmm. So when you're authentic, absolutely uh, true to yourself, but you got to make sure it sees through everything that you do. And then you got to show up, you know, showing up is half the battle. Even when you don't want to show up, even when you don't want to post on social, if you want to grow, you got to do it. So, Mm -hmm. yep. Those that those are my three nuggets. So that's uh, consistency, authenticity, and, and what was the third one? Showing up or just showing up. W- wash and repeat. Wash and repeat. You got to yeah. show up. Yeah, I love that. All right, very cool. Well, I appreciate your time and 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 your insight on all of these things. I think it's been a really. Yeah. Uh, interesting conversation on a lot of different things related to branding which i'm you know big on i think the way that realtors can really separate themselves from the rest of the pack is by building a strong trustworthy personal brand and that is how you generate you know word of mouth you get more referrals you get better engagement on social media it just all kind of funnels in when you have that piece really dialed in yeah you got it that's it Cool. So for anyone that wants to learn more from you, how can they connect with you? So 
So the easiest way is go to connect with Christina and Christina with a K connectwithchristina.com. My uh, business name is Aesthetics and Style, but it's really hard to spell. So go to connectwithchristina.com. Very cool. Connectwithchristina.com. We will definitely check that out. Yeah, and some thank you so much. There to download if uh, anyone wants. So yeah. Well, thank you there for you having go. me. Uh, absolutely. And we do love freebies. So thank you for that. And to everyone out there, if you like money and you like real estate, this is the show for you. We'll see you on the next one.